Welcome back to the VMware vCenter Site Recovery Manager 5 video series. My name is Andrew Elwood. I'm a senior technical instructor with VMware Education Services. So in the last module, we took a look at creating a recovery plan. And a recovery plan is essentially a script, and a script which tells the SRM environment exactly which virtual machines to fail over from the protected site to the recovery site, what sequence to start them up in, what any dependencies may be, and additionally, we've got some other parameters in there like which virtual machines we're going to turn off uh, to make room for the incoming virtual machines when we actually have the failover. Well, one of the really, really powerful features of SRM is the ability to test that recovery plan. Now that you've taken all the time and effort to build the thing, let's go ahead and run through a test whereby you can see exactly how the dependencies do work. And you can actually log into the servers on the recovery site to be able to test it. Well, that's interesting, but do you really want to do that during a time frame when you're still doing production? And some folks are forced to do this because of uh, government regulations and those types of things, as well as maybe even just some internal IT policies. So one of the interesting things about our recovery plans is that recovery plans themselves don't typically turn off the virtual machine that we're actually failing over. So we start with virtual machines in the protected site that are marked for replication and for recovery in the event of a failure. When you go to execute the recovery plan, the first step is to synchronize the storage. In other words, anything that was written to disk on the protected site that has not yet been replicated, we will flush that to disk and replicate the process so that the recovery site then has the most up-to-date information. Um, if you have any ESXi hosts that are in standby mode, if you happen to be running VM, uh, vSphere Distributed Power Management or DPM, uh, those hosts will be brought out of standby mode. Non-critical virtual machines would be then suspended. Those would have been VMs that you defined as non-critical within your recovery plan. The placeholder virtual machines are replaced by the recovered virtual machines. Uh, placeholder virtual machines were nothing more than a place to store which network, which resource pool, which virtual machine folder we want to start those guys up in. In other words, what home are they going to have when they land on the recovery site? And then virtual machines are then also configured, those that are failing over, to use the recovery storage and test networks. And that's configured within the recovery plan itself. So when we go through testing, you have the ability to define a dedicated test network such that if I were to fail over a virtual machine from New York to Chicago, and the original VM that that guy is based on is still running in New York, what would happen if you had stretched VLANs in place where all of the IP addresses are visible in both New York and Chicago? What would happen if you brought up that recovered VM with exactly the same IP address as the parent VM that it was based on? Well, clearly we would have an issue. So one of the very cool features is we can automatically create a recovery network or we can define our own uh, test network for testing the recovery process when we're in test only mode. Of course, when we're in full failover mode, we may want it to come up on that first network that we talked about. So this demonstration is actually going to go through that process. We're going to take a look at performing a test failover in our environment. We're going to use that recovery plan that we built during the last segment, and we're going to run it here and show you the results of a test failover, and then show you how to clean up from the back end of that test failover. So now that we've got our, our testing, our recovery plan all built, one of the features that we have within our recovery plans is the ability to run a test recovery. Uh, and that's actually a very powerful tool. A lot of people have got disaster recovery plans that are on pencil and paper or perhaps even you know, stored in a spreadsheet somewhere. But the reality is they're almost impossible to test. And this is one of the features of SRM that we have just as a, as a wonderful feature. So here we're looking through just to verify that this is the testing plan that we want to look at. Okay, uh, There's our individual steps. We can take a look at the individual steps as we did when we built the recovery plan. So yep, this is the one I'm interested in and there's my prompt that I added in the last dialogue. And once we're happy that this is what we're looking for, uh, we can simply use the uh, blue uh, play button, if you will, uh, next to the test item above the recovery plans dialog box. So, uh, so notice it says, hey, we're going to do some stuff here. Uh, and one of the options at the bottom there is storage replication. It says, we're going to take an opportunity to just flush the replication piece across to the recovery site so that when we do, in fact, do a startup, we're going to have the most recent changes that were put into play for each of the virtual machines under the covers. We simply click uh, go 
you know, next. Um, and if you expand through the dialog box, we can look at the various different steps that are actually occurring in real time as they're actually functioning. And so the first uh, four steps, things like synchronize storage and restore hosts from standby, uh, and then create writable storage snapshot, all necessary elements for us to get to the point where we're able to um, start up our virtual machines in that test environment. And then notice that when we hit the priority, uh, the step number five, the power on priority one VMs, uh, the current state is running. Uh, if we look down the uh, individual details under 5.1.1, things like configure storage, and 5.1.2 of configure test network, we're all successful. In the meantime, we're just simply waiting for the virtual machine's guest operating system to start up. And we're sitting looking at 77% now with the wait for VMware tools being set to 11%. Now, when we built our recovery plan, one of the optional elements we could have added in there was exactly how long do we want to wait for VMware tools before we consider it a failed process and then just move on to the next item in the list. Uh, in this case, we're going to wait for VMware tools. We've tested this already and know that VMware tools are in fact going to start up. Uh, the trick is, is it just takes a few moments. So uh, based on the magic of editing, we're going to skip through that right now and we'll reconvene when the other VMs or when the next step in the phase starts. So the virtual machine has successfully started up and notice here's my prompt, check the DB server. And it's up to you to go ahead and actually jump into whatever tools you think are appropriate. In this case, I'm just going to use the vSphere client. I'm going to go over and find my failed over uh, SRM or database server. Um, so we're going to dig down through the recovered services dialog box because that's where it should show up because don't forget we did that inventory mapping go under database servers and there it is, it's launched. Well, that's great, but I'm pretty sure all of us have seen virtual machines that have a good power symbol before where the guest operating system may not be completely functional. So we're gonna go ahead and open a console and just check that out. And sure enough, there it is waiting for a login prompt. Uh, we'll log in as root just to verify that this particular uh, system is in fact functional. And of course, if it was a true database server, I might run some database integrity tests or something similar. Now, be aware that one of the items that we didn't uh, discuss in detail when we built that prompt was that I can, in fact, set a finite timeout. So if some administrator doesn't pay attention to the prompt and doesn't go ahead and do it, that doesn't mean the recovery plan stops indefinitely. In this case, there was a five-minute wait time uh, as a default. We're going to now dismiss that, and what that then allows the recovery plan to do is, okay, I'll keep going with the next steps. And again, we're going to be sitting looking at these virtual machines as they spool up. We're going to go through the uh, priority two virtual machine, which in our case was the app server. And then once that has successfully completed, we're going to move on to the priority three virtual machines. Uh, and notice that it's just sitting waiting right now as the priority two continues to start. Once the priority two virtual machines have started up, we move on to fire up the priority three VMs. In this case, we only have one of them, that's the web server, and it'll go through the same routine as the previous ones did. And once the recovery plan has completed, you get the warning message, or actually the success message, that the test was in fact complete. Um, clearly at this point, the best thing for you to do would be to go ahead and test the validity of your entire environment. Don't forget, your virtual machines may have started up on a different network, because that's what you specified. So, you know, we, we can look through the actual recovery plan for errors. If there were any errors during the running of this, they will be listed in red. You can then investigate why that was the case. Uh, maybe it was VMware tools failed to start for some reason. Uh, the assumption is that you should go out and actually find the virtual machines in inventory and notice that here we are looking through our recovered services dialog and we see each of the virtual machines failed over in the appropriate target location according to our inventory mappings. Um, so, short version, go ahead, have a look, test the validity of this thing. I mean, testing the fact that your VM started up is one thing, but testing how the multi-tier application is communicating with each other in the recovery site is probably a more important thing to actually evaluate. So go through those gyrations, and once you've finished with all of that testing, then you can come back to your SRM dialog box and have a look towards saying, okay, we're happy with that, let's go ahead and do the cleanup. And that's simply a matter of clicking the blue cleanup option near the top of the screen. 
Uh, simply answer the questions in the wizard. It really basically says, do you want to do this? And this is what it's going to do. And it powers off the test VMs, resumes any non-critical VMs that you had suspended. In our case, we didn't suspend any. Uh, and cleans up the necessary storage componentry. And at that point, you're pretty much done with testing. Well, I think that's one of the most powerful features that we've got is the ability to actually test a recovery plan before we absolutely have the company rely on having a good recovery plan. Because I don't know about you, if I make a mistake in something, it's a lot easier to be able to test it and recover from that mistake before it really means the company loses money. Uh, so from my books, one of the most powerful features we've got. Uh, on that note, if you'd like to learn more about that powerful feature along with the rest of the configuration of SRM5 and how to deploy it in your environment, uh, go to vmware.com slash education. The class you're searching for is the SRM5 Install Configure Manage class.